Let me and Nick uh, take your questions. Can you hear me? I can. Uh, my question is primarily for, for General Nicholson, I think, at least for starters. Uh, General, obviously, uh, soon you will be working for a different commander in chief and a different uh, secretary of defense. So I'm wondering whether you may have received any kind of guidance from the President of the United States forward next year. Are you already considering some options, some different approaches to managing the conflict in the coming year? Well, thank you. Let me just say that you the transition first, and then you answer the, you answer the question. I, 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 I just want to say um, that the, our, the department is uh, working on and committed to uh, a transition that allows the new team there to hit the ground uh, uh, running. Uh, we're responding to and will continue to respond to and make uh, questions and to make available people, including General Nicholson. That hasn't been requested yet, but I just want to make it clear that if that it does come up in the future, of course, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll make General Nicholson uh, available. So, Thank you, Mr. Secretary. And uh, Bob, what I'd add to that is uh, the fundamental rationale for being here in Afghanistan as a secretary of reference has not changed. When you look at the Afghanistan-Pakistan region, there are 20 U.S. designated terrorist groups in this region. Our policy of having an enduring counterterrorism effort alongside our Afghan partners is, in my, in my view, very sound and something we need to continue. If you look at this past year in terms of our counterterrorism effort, uh, we have focused on Al-Qaeda and Islamic State in particular with great success, uh, and we wish to continue that. So I think the fundamental logic is, uh, is very sound. The uh, second part of our mission, as the Secretary mentioned, is to train, advise, and assist the Afghan forces. When you look at the performance of the Afghan forces this year, it was a tough year. They were tested, but they prevailed. And this is a testimony to the effectiveness of our mission here, it also should be noted that we have a 39-nation coalition here. So this uh, mission and its uh, continuance has been endorsed as recently as the Warsaw Summit, where those uh, coalition partners all committed to four more years of uh, help to the Afghans, and at the Brussels Donor Conference, where donors uh, uh, expressed an intent to commit another $15.2 billion to development. So I think we see a lot of positive momentum and uh, effectiveness uh, stemming from this policy. So they have a national campaign plan. That campaign plan ends with a reconciliation with the belligerents or a reconciliation with enough of them that the balance can be uh, managed uh, by the Afghan security forces. So I'd say this year we're on that glide path. 
when you look at the uh, the amount of the population secured by the government, it, is, it equates to roughly two thirds, about 64 uh, percent. The Taliban uh, are viewed uh, with great disdain by the Afghan people. Eight to seven percent would tell you that a return to Taliban rule would be bad for the country. There's also great confidence expressed in the Afghan security forces. And so, and again, roughly three quarters of the population say they have uh, faith and confidence in the Afghan security forces. So these ingredients add up to, uh, a, I think, a year-on-year -year increase in the amount of uh, security provided by the government over the population, and that is the objective of the national campaign plan, to a point where the uh, enemy is incentivized to reconcile. Now, let's look at the Hezbi Islami uh, peace uh, deal that was reached this year. Uh, this uh, is an important milestone. It, it demonstrates that former belligerents can reconcile with the government, and next year they'll go through a reintegration process. So I think uh, year on year, uh, with the support provided by the international community from the Warsaw Summit, from Brussels, uh, we're going to see this gradual improvement in the situation until they get to this critical mass of the population that they control, and ideally a reconciliation with the belligerents. Thank you. General Nicholson you, and, and, and Secretary Carter, you both spoke of uh, efforts against uh, terrorists, and uh, Secretary Carter, you spoke of great success going against Al Qaeda. Uh, since the original authorization for the use of military force here was specifically tailored to go after Al Qaeda, to what extent has Al Qaeda been eliminated from Afghanistan, and how far are is the United States from achieving that objective? Uh, well, th this has been a, a, a big year in that um, connection. Uh, David, and since he uh, uh, conducted many of those operations, uh, let me give uh, a big uh, uh, pleasure of reporting the results. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. And uh, first, I want to thank our uh, counterterrorism forces, Special Operations Force, have done a great job this year. These operations have been done in conjunction with our Afghan partners. So, uh, highlights this year, I mentioned there were 20 terrorist groups in the region. Seven of those are in Pakistan. Of these 20, our CT forces with, operating with the Afghans have killed five of the emirs of the 20 organizations. They have inflicted, uh, if, for example, to take Islamic State. So Islamic State has lost a third of its fighters, two-thirds of the territory that they have seized, and we have killed the top 12 leaders, including their emir, uh, Hafez Sayyid Khan. So this is just one example. Against Al-Qaeda, Farouk Al-Qatari, who was the external operations director for Al-Qaeda, was killed on October 23rd, along with a few of his associates. Uh, he was involved within the last year in active uh, plotting against uh, the West, against the United States and our allies. So by removing him, we have severely disrupted their ability to do that. We'll continue to keep the pressure on these organizations and we'll continue to take the fight to them. Uh, and so we, uh, the medium within which some of these groups like uh, Islamic State and Al-Qaeda operate is provided in part by the uh, other insurgent and terrorist organizations in the country. So pressure on the, on the whole is important. I also want to point out the Afghans' uh, key role in all of this. So 80% of the operations uh, done by the Afghan Special Forces are independent of U.S. Uh, enablers, but those operations are critical in keeping pressure on these uh, organizations. Would it be good to characterize Al Qaeda today? Let me follow up. Does Al Qaeda represent a threat to the United States at this point? Al-Qaeda has the intent uh, to attack the United States. Their capability, we're working hard on that, on reducing that capability. But what you see, you have uh, core Al-Qaeda, you also have Al-Qaeda's affiliates. So here in Afghanistan, we have a group called Al-Qaeda and the Indian subcontinent. And so the two of these groups together have the intent and the capability to conduct attacks outside of Afghanistan. And in the case of, Al of core Al-Qaeda, they certainly have the intent uh, to try to conduct operations against the United States. Thanks, Secretary. Um, with regards to 
Today, President Ghani spoke at length about how their commitment took resources and the commitment of continued U.S. personnel here had gone a long way in terms of boosting morale in the country. But given that there's a transition, a, a new administration coming in, are you hearing any expressions of concern from the Afghan partners, whether in the Afghan military or within the Afghan political establishment? And if I may just quickly, uh, General, you've described a moderate level of risk with the current resources. Um, would, what additional resources would reduce that risk? Is it more trainers, more air assets, those kind of things? Well, with respect to the first part of the question, no, it wasn't, I did, uh, there was a concern. Um, uh, we did talk about the future. Uh, so in addition to President Ghani uh, uh, thanking the United States and the coalition for the decisions made over the last year, the uh, support, um, we did talk about the future. Um, we talked about the so-called winter reset, uh, which is important to look ahead to next summer. Uh, we look. We, we talked about the importance of uh, political unity here in Afghanistan, continuing into the future. Uh, we talked about the continued need for economic uh, and uh, reform and any corruption. Um, and we talked about uh, regional security affairs and the actions of others in the area, uh, including their actions uh, within Afghanistan. So it was a very forward-looking uh, uh, conversation. Uh, but the reason why I think uh, President Ghani has confidence in the future of his uh, country is uh, well, importantly because of some of the decisions taken over the last year. Um, the Secretary of Russia, I think that was for everybody. Thanks, Mr. Secretary. Well, thanks for the question, and uh, and to reiterate on the Warsaw Summit. So when we talk about Afghan uh, morale and hope for the future, the international decision of this coalition to recommit to four more years uh, provided a huge boost in morale to the government, to the Afghan security forces themselves, but mainly to the Afghan people. So I think. Uh, in July, that renewal of commitment, and then the, the follow-on at Brussels with the renewed uh, donor commitment was extremely important to Afghan uh, morale. Uh, we have seen, despite the fact that this was a tough year, and I would say the Afghan security forces were tested, but they prevailed, we've actually seen a, a decrease in the number of Afghans who uh, say they would seek to emigrate. Now, I, I know they, these are small signs of, of, of uh, well, I already mentioned the fact that 87% uh, you know, of the people do not want to see a return of the Taliban. Uh, but with respect to the question on risk, I've said it's a moderate but acceptable level of risk. And in terms of uh, what uh, are we doing, of course, we're primarily doing our counterterrorism mission. And when I need additional assets for that, they are brought in uh, for the duration that we need them, and then they can depart again. So there's been I've been able to get everything I've needed when it comes to my counterterrorism mission. And with respect to the advising mission, what we've done uh, this year is sort of reorganized our advisors and gone back to some of our allies, uh, especially with respect to, for example, the training base, the schools, the education system, and we've got some great